Hey, what's going on YouTube? Kenny here. So in an attempt to better serve the community, I am going to do a this stock versus that stock. And we're going to do it in probably what is the hardest category of stocks to do because because that was my Boston accent there because there is no real kind of uh, meaningful way to qualitatively get an advantage in terms of like uh, the consumer, right? So this is where hedge funds should do better, right? It's a value stock game. It's literally the numbers should work out, right? There's no growth here. Uh, so the places that you should be picking stocks or like if you have two stocks like Upwork versus Fiverr, more of a math problem really, right? There is a lot of qualitative pieces to that because they're attacking different markets. But when it comes to banks, typically they're just lending money to categorically the same amount of people. Uh, and so really what you want to look at here is, you know, can you define a better company based on just the way that you set up your own research? And so we're going to show you how we're going to set it up to do this kind of research and to score uh, two different banks. Uh, and actually today we are going to go do PNC Bank versus Bank of America. And so again, the reason why I think this is kind of incongruent or you're not going to get an advantage here uh, because number one retail we don't have the right information because if you didn't know most banking kind of metrics are just it's a big black box like you have no idea how much leverage they have on in terms of how much they've loaned people uh, money that shouldn't be loaned and it's really kind of hard to get a sense of that because they can I mean there's rating systems and stuff but you saw what happened and generally I like to stay away from it but We've been talking about portfolio allocations. We've been talking about long-term strategies. So you should probably have some financials. Uh, again, we did take an XLF trade today. Uh, and that's because, you know, it looks like it's setting up really well. And uh, it's kind of been abused a little bit lately. So looking for a little bit of a, a, a run. But, you know, really I'm doing this because we want to see if, you know, indeed uh, coming up we'll be able to kind of um, – what I would say, you know, see how accurate we are. And so we're going to put the uh, put the uh, algorithm to the test here. And then, you know, one month later, we'll, we'll test to see if uh, we were right. So there's going to be a clear winner today. And so we're going to do PNC versus Bank of America uh, in old fashioned um, versus style. So PNC versus Bank of America. Here we go. Let's do it. All right. Um, OK, so first things first. This is what they call a correlation coefficient, and it's showing uh, 0 0.86. So uh, one would mean one to one, they're exactly the same stock. So for instance, well, it's hard to get one, because even if you if you take like the underlying assets um, and put them in an ETF, you're still going to have some kind of uh, difference, right? Some kind of divergence. Um, based on the market participants or the market makers, right? Uh, but, you know, that's the closest you'll get for a one-for-one. One. But here you have a 0.86. So there's about a 0.14 uh, divergence. What does that look like? Okay. That looks like this. Um, essentially, you know, there's spots where it heats up and the stocks do a little bit of different. Uh, but essentially, you know, it moves up together moves up together. The drawdowns might not be as big because, you know, they might be doing better. Uh, but essentially, it is kind of the same company if you look at it. And so this is one of those weird ones where, you know, we've talked about AMD versus kind of Intel. And like you're actually diversified if you have that. One emerging diversification is Neo and Tesla. Uh, those two companies no longer trade in tandem. So it's kind of interesting because if you own Neo and you own Tesla, and you think you're just kind of uh, hedging, you kind of are. You're pretty diversified, actually. Okay, so next. Let's go over PNC Bank first and kind of just go over some scoring metrics and kind of how we think about it. So this is what we call a baseline or a smoothing uh, a metric. And so smoothing meaning you want to take the data and kind of normalize it with enough data, enough breadth, if you will, um, it's not really complicated. All, all I'm trying to suggest is like it's kind of like putting, uh, so Richard was mentioning the other day, kind of putting like putting SPY, the S&P, into your portfolio. It kind of like flattens it out a little bit, right? Uh, 
just to make sure there's not so, some kind of an anomalous number that's going to really detract from it. And so we'll weight this into our little algorithm as well. So we're showing a smart score here from tip ranks of 10. So 10 out of 10, obviously the best you can get. The only thing that's kind of bearish is really the decreased hedge fund uh, activity. And obviously, you know, they kind of... Uh, Went for <laughs> they ran for the hills uh, based on obviously the interest rates won, but uh, uh, just kind of the um, the fang tailwinds that are that were incoming. Uh, everybody's kind of uh, hiding in fang, you know. I mean, if you ever thought about why they are doing it, essentially Apple is a is a, is, a, is a treasury bond, right? They have like a bond portfolio that's like so massive that it's like it can almost be included in the S&P 500. So think about it that way. That's kind of why uh, hedge funds are kind of running away. But I uh, just wanted to kind of think about that. But everything else is really just really bullish and very positive. So this is all good. Uh, okay, so here we're looking at consensus score. So uh, you can get this from the Wall Street Journal or whatever else, but this is just a one-stop shop. But it's just showing that there's a 12.46% upside. So what what is the kind of like intrinsic value versus where it should be at? And so like most analysts consensus say two, $208.36. And so we're trading uh, just below that. Or I'm sorry, yeah. Okay, uh, here's the fundamental score. We're going to take a look at some fundamentals. Obviously, PE ratio for PE ratio fourteen, uh, lower the better. Revenues um, going up, and very recently, so that's very good as well. Uh, Kagar missing negative one point seven percent, so negative growth, but uh, obviously might be an anomaly. You got to recheck the the data, but I mean for a quick analysis, for a kind of first initial cursory look, this is just one of the things that. Uh, we look at to to kind of get a sense of where we're at. So levered free cash flow, doing the up thing. So that's very good. Gross profits good as well. Uh, shares outstanding, buying back shares or something, right? So that's the best. Uh, and total assets, well, it's the best if you don't know what to do with your money. Uh, total assets going up and current liabilities going up as well to match. So that's kind of flat. Um, financial health, most of it's good. Price momentum looking really good here though uh, for PNC Bank. So this is the DeMarc indicator, and we use this for entries, but essentially it tries to showcase uh, what we call sentiment uh, decay or sentiment exhaustion. Nines are intermediate and 13s are extreme. Uh, but when it comes to technical analysis, and you know this if you watch the channel more than one, one time, uh, you know, really it's all about like if the technicals work or a certain thing works for that stock, then that's what you should use, right? Sometimes fundamental analysis is just completely stupid to try to do, right? Like try to put a discounted cash flow on some of these high growth stocks. It's not worth it, right? Uh, and so, you know, you can't be lazy with your analysis. Sometimes sentiment analysis is going to work far better than technical analysis. And so those spots are the ones that you pick. So don't just be lazy and say, well, I did a DCF model and this thing came up way underweight. Of course, it's a fucking growth stock, <laughs> you know. Uh, anyways, uh, so anyways, we're uh, mid-cycle in a buy count, actually. So we're still supposed to be uh, running down here, which is interesting. Uh, but obviously, you know, bounce really heavy off of this TDST line, 173.55. But, um, you know, we'll kind of take a look at the technicals uh, in terms of how we look at it. And so at Red Cliff Research, you know that we look at horizontal channels, and that's one of the most true and honest channels. And if you can see back here, we've definitely broken above, broken, 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 right? Broken above 165, which is a critical kind of line. And it's obviously being supported there very nicely. It's it's holding just fine. So on the macro daily chart, you know, over the years, over the last three years, we're doing really good here. So full recovery. Uh, oops. Um, if you look at the uh, kind of... Um, Moving averages, you know, it has crushed down past the 100, but full bounce and it's sitting above the 100 now. So that's very optimistic. And that's kind of when you want to get in. When you see that a moving average uh, or a trend line is helping support your thesis, that's when you hop in, right? And so that's definitely doing that. So that's kind of a plus. Uh, in terms of volume, you know, you're not going to see anything but healthy volume. Can it be a, considered a crowded trade? Maybe doesn't look like it right now. Um, okay, so uh, this is the Metis uh, engine that we've named um, 
just in partnership with uh, one of the other companies that we work with is Centrala, the other company I own. Um, basically, this is the pattern indicator, um, but it's showing, wow, why do, why do I not have the cool um, fonts here? Guys, I had these cool high-speed, high-tech fonts, and now they're, they look like Calibri. Why, why do I have Calibri? This is embarrassing. I'm going to need to take a drink because of that. Sorry, hold on. Apologies for the Calibri. Terrible. Gross. Pathetic. Uh, anyways, so bullish uh, in terms of pattern. It's, this is a pattern indicator. Bullish patterns uh, finding four. Uh, bearish patterns finding six, but only 48% confidence. So we can just go ahead and say that's useless. And 61% uh, not enough to tell me anything. So that's completely useless as well. And if you're wondering what number is significant to us, 95% typically. So you at least want to see one at 95 percent, and none of these didn't meet that threshold of the ones that we saw. And so let's take a look at sentiment. Uh, one of the things we look at here is sentiment. There's a bunch of ways to look at it, but here's a simple way. This is a uh, just uh, this is not like uh, any any kind of advanced compute. This is this is just raw dictionary. Uh, kind of sentiment but you know in terms of words that are excited or relaxed or whatever like that like in terms of the excitement threshold you know we do have three dots and if we're looking at scatter plots we're looking at this in that way because we're going to compare it to Bank of America uh, but more than that uh, nothing negative which is good and especially for banks since 2008 we're looking good and then PNC in terms of like tweets over time Big interesting hockey stick here from uh, uh, 713 to 718, right? So the last five days were uh, definitely kind of a um, what you would call a uh, uh, parabolic move and then still moving upwards here a bit. And so, you know, about 183% move really from zero. Um, but that's going to be significant when we compare it against uh, Bank of America. And so finally, excuse me one second, if we're taking the score, uh, just remember here for us, five is average, and this score is obviously weighted. So, I mean, an average score, so if your stock was average, it'd be 50%. Don't think of 70% like school, like I got to pass school, or 65, whatever you guys do. Uh, but smoothing, uh, full score on the smoothing score, uh, that's a 10 weighted to 10. Uh, the consensus score or the risk to reward, uh, eight. Uh, the macro score, uh, it's going to get the same as Bank of America, but s essentially the macro score is a, oops, sorry, uh, is a 7. You get 14 weighted twice. Uh, the fundamentals, uh, the fundamentals showing a 7.5. The entry itself, um, something's wrong, boys and girls. Something's wrong with these weights. No, it's fine. Uh, okay. Uh, fundamentals, 7.5. Entry, 6. The technicals, uh, you get uh, the 10. The AI score, you get 5 uh, and 8 for sentiment. So we get 68.5. 68.5. And you can't see that because it's a little low. Hold on. Let me move this up, boys and girls. Uh, uh, stand by. Nope. That's not how you do it. That's not how you do that. That's how you do that. All right. 68.5. That's the number you get. And so let's compare that now with Bank of America. America. Uh Smart score of nine, same thing. And the only other thing, though, hey, insider activity. This is actually one of the leading indicators. Uh, but selling is usually not that bad. Buying is more of a sign when it comes to insider activity. So obviously uh, still a nine. That's really good, not quite a 10. Uh, in terms of upside, a little bit more upside. So on the consensus, uh, the analysts think that Bank of America is a little bit better of a buy here in terms of risk to reward. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and look at the fundamentals here. Uh, interesting uh, pattern here for leverage free cash flow, though, going negative for whatever reason. So, not sure what that's about. Have to reinspect that. And then it doesn't have the price momentum that um, uh, that PNC Bank has. Uh, and also, all, all these other things pretty similar. Uh, again, total assets and current liabilities going the same direction. We want to see current liabilities going down, but I mean, this is not an asset light model. So no worries on that. Uh, in terms of the DeMarc indicators, actually worse. Uh, printed a six down here. Uh, and again, though, still on the downward pattern. So this catch is 
it needs to break. And if this catch does break, it's going to run uh, a lot more significantly than than you would think, right? So um, kind of kind of don't want to dive too deep into that because that's not what this video is about. But we're using this score as an entry point score uh, like we did in the other one. And on the technicals, the difference between this one is, and if you're comparing, right, this one crossed far down uh, under the 100. It tried to make a, uh, a bounce back up, but as you can see here, it's not sitting over the 100. And that's problematic for a couple reasons. Uh, the biggest reason, though, is because, you know, that 100 is good, nice, true support. And so if we're not going to hold on the 100, we're probably going for a ride and going to hit the 200. But as you can see, there was a lot of correlation between the two. So if you're leaning one way or the other, this is another way to say, okay, let me find a stock that's correlated and let me chart that pattern. So as you can see, PNC was over the 100 and BOA is not. But because I got to split the difference and think, hey, is it going to slip to the 200 or go back over the 100 and stay? Because I know the correlation coefficient is pretty deep, uh, 0.83. I would say that, you know, I'd err on the side of optimism and say Bank of America is going to hold here. So in terms of patterns, a little bit different. Gosh, the Calibri boys, unbelievable. Uh, that's because it was such a cool font that it just wouldn't accept it. That's, that's what it was. Uh, four, 67%, six, 51% bearish. Doesn't matter. No no merging uh, patterns and no signals to, to action off of. So uh, nothing interesting here. And sometimes uh, sometimes AI is really boring. <laughs> so um, Sentiment-wise, only one kind of cluster outside uh, past excited, which is kind of the threshold we use to measure. Uh, so that's fine. The other one had about three, but this is like a little bit farther out, right? Um, okay, so in terms of volumetric data, in terms of tweets, we get all the way up to 497 tweets up here. So volumetrically, far more. Uh, but, you know, Bank of America, in terms of who they are and what they've done, uh, interesting little plateau here. So that looks like an anomaly in the data. So I'd have to check that out and see what that actually is. Uh, and uh, I don't have... <laughs> I don't have the time to justify the data here today, but uh, just to understand it, you know, yes, there's more volume in Bank of America. So sentiment wise, uh, pretty similar. Uh, so we'll probably get almost exactly the same score. Uh, so, OK, here's the kind of breakdown and you kind of saw us go through it. What is my point to this? You know, you, you do you do or you should have a score and you should think about how that score looks uh, in terms of whether or not you're going to buy one over the other or even if you want to say okay i want to buy both what weight should i or how should i balance it you know you should say okay i'll buy you know 11 shares six shares of pnc and then five of bac right or something like that obviously you can buy the etf but there's etf management fees etc cetera, etc cetera. but most people don't think about that and most people don't need to think about that to be honest so the final tally, and here we go, uh, 68 and a half versus 60.5. So if we're doing the uh, March Madness, it's not March, so that's not even a good analogy. It's July. Uh, but yeah, PNC wins, and then uh, we'll put them in a duel against the, the last, the other two banks over here, uh, which is Synchrony and Morgan Stanley. So what's going to happen is these guys are going to go ahead and battle it off, and then, you know, you know, the winner battles the winner or something, right? So anyways, um, really, I'm saying that to be a little bit glib because honestly, this is all you need to do. <laughs> and this is why I said that uh, uh, you really don't need to be picking banks. Uh, I just don't think you need to. Like the sector is going to move pretty close to each other. Uh, if you're asking me the difference between Neo and Tesla, then yeah, you should probably take a look at that if you only have weight for one, and you probably should diversify. Uh, then again, you know, if you have other companies that you are looking at, especially gaming companies, those do tend to be very qualitative, right? So esports, gaming, that kind of thing, very qualitative. Um, interesting companies that IPO, like for instance, Oatly. I'm not saying I'm bullish on Oatly, but you know, interesting, unique companies like that where there's a lot of speculation involved. That's where you want to be picking companies. That's where you have that kind of advantage. You have that gut visceral feeling like, oh, I like this product. And I know most people will like this product. So for me, I'm the opposite. 
because I'm so contrarian to everybody else. Not so I'm not trying to sound cool or anything. Like, oh, I'm such a cool kid. I'm a contrarian. No, but I'm saying I live my life pretty different from everybody else. So when I see somebody liking something a lot, that's kind of what I stay away from. And I'm like, man, that's kind of stupid. It's going to make a lot of money. And so, <laughs> and so Funko is probably one of those things that like, I don't, I mean, I have never bought one. I, I, I understand why people want a piece of something that's collectible and kind of keeps a memory or I don't know. I really don't know, but I just know that people will like, it, it looks like something that people would like. So, you know, for those reasons, uh, I don't just discount other people's opinions. I do respect them. And that's kind of why I think Funko is an interesting thing. And in fact, maybe I'll buy some, but I mean, I have some of the stock, so that's good enough. Right. Uh, okay. Well, really that is it for today's video. If you like this video, if you're new and you made it all the way to the end, please comment below because I just want to know if anybody has uh, made it to the end on a new video in a long time. Um, so it's always fun to see that one person come in and uh, pretend that uh, uh, they're new into the channel and uh, made it to the end. But uh, yeah, uh, if you like this kind of thing, we do send out a free macro newsletter at the end of the month. It's free. Link in the description or you can go to redcliffresearch.com. Snoop around, check it out. Uh, a lot of interesting things there as well. So yeah, thanks for watching and we will see you tomorrow. Peace.